Oh iya. My name is Luke. Welcome to Ruth Farms. Today's Friday. It's June 7th. As y'all can see behind me here, we got our John Deere 6620 out. Um, yesterday evening, I gave it a good bath. This thing was disgusting. Um, I'll throw in a little clip here uh, where I, before I started cleaning it, it was bad. Bath day for the 6620. Getting ready for wheat. I usually try to wash it off, get all the bean dust off. Well, if we do have a fire, hopefully it's not as bad. Bean dust is so bad, just to sit and smolder. So, she is dirty, dirty, dirty. So we're going to give her a bath. Let's get at it. I got to clean out the hopper here. As I was starting to clean it yesterday, um, the good Lord decided to help me and put it providing us over a half an inch of rain so um the hopper was empty the grain tank but this piece here going up into the uh grain tank it still has some beans in it so they're all nice and mushy and gross now so gotta get those out um i've got to pull the chopper off the combine um not sure how much this i'm on video because i done a video on it last year um uh, i may pulling the chopper and all that stuff off um we have to put our yield monitor on which is probably not going to happen today because i'm hoping to have a surprise for you guys later today um we're going to visit a buddy of mine's farm it may come out before this video I'm not sure how i'll edit all this in but we got to put the yield monitor on and then this belt right here i think it's this belt yeah you can see it's starting to crack I've had the belt for like literally four years and I've just been dreading putting it on just because I've got to take a wad of stuff off. I've got to take this belt off and then I think this these three big belts here off. It's just not going to be fun. But we'll get it. It needs to be done because eventually that thing's going to break on us and then I'm going to wish I had done it earlier. But Anyway, we got it cleaned off good here. Y'all can tell up in here, it's pretty clean. I'm sure I'll probably miss some spots here and there, but much better than it was. Um, we figured out part of our noise issues is in the cab. I got part of them fixed, um, but then again, part of them is a piece underneath the seat um, power shaft that goes between the motor. Anyway, it's gonna need a new shaft and a new hub which requires pulling the motor, so we'll fix that later. Hey guys, welcome back. So we are installing our loop yield monitor here on our John Deere 6620. Um, so you have these optical sensors here. This is not where they go, obviously. I've just got them stuck here. They're magnetic base, and then the sensors go between them, and they have this little eye thing that protects it. Um, so judging off of our user manual, and just using our basic common sense, um, they want you to bore a hole, it's a seven eighths hole, approximately 30 to 35 millimeters from this edge to here. Um, if anyone is wondering, you know, if you ain't got 30, anything that measures in millimeters, they actually send a little tape measure that does. Um, but if y'all can see through there, there's actually a hole all the way through. I don't know if y'all can see through it or not, but hole goes all the way through. So the way I measured it was I came up here, I found me a good place. If I go any higher than this right here, there's not enough room between the grain tank up here and the elevator to put the sensors in there. So I came down to here. Um, I marked my 30 millimeter mark, and then I marked me a straight line using a straight edge or a square from here 
all the way to the back. If it, you know, if it shows up back there, I've got a black mark. And then from that mark, I mark a straight line across at 30 millimeters on the back side. I bored a quarter inch hole on that side. Uh, kind of climbed up through here, up underneath above the fuel tank in between this piece here, enough to bore a quarter inch hole. And then I used a, uh, I didn't have a bit long enough, so I took a hole saw, seven eighths hole saw, um, and then used a five sixteenths socket taped to a three eighths, probably a six inch extension. And then I just used my impact. I bored through this side, and then with the quarter inch hole on the back side, uh, I could bore through and stick my bit through it, and then I already had my lineup hole. So we have a perfectly straight hole, seven eighths hole from this side to that side. So now we just have to install these sensors which I will show you guys once I have them done here in just a second. So there ain't no way of me showing you guys, but this little glass thing on the end of this black piece, that's a protector for the actual sensor. That little glass piece right there, that's what goes through the seven eighths hole that you drill. Um, you get that in there, and then that little black piece should be tight against the uh, frame of the combine or the elevator there. And then you just tighten your sensor nuts up here, and then they're pretty secure. And we're gonna have to figure out how to really, really keep these cords safe. So I'm gonna hop in there on the inside and do the back side, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we got our sensors for our yield uh, portion stuck up there. Uh, this is our mounting bracket for our moisture tester. The only way I can get this to work is to twist it, which I think will be fine. And it's, I'm assuming that's why they have such a big gap up here so that you can twist it on this little lip. They said to keep it just about as low as you can go, but I want it a little above this in case they ever need to take this piece here off. So I'm gonna take and mount where this needs to go. And that's what I've come up with. That shows up on camera there, there, and then down here. And I will cut that out with my grinder, and then we will mount this piece. So the whole idea behind this uh, moisture sensor is this is our clean grain elevator. So as the grain comes through the combine and it's cleaned, it comes up through here, and there's paddles. They go around, up, and then they come back down. And then once, once it leaves this elevator, there's an auger that runs into the bin. All right, so the idea here is uh, grain will fall through this hole as it's going up. It'll fall into the hole, which will go down into the sensor. All right, once it gets what it needs, the amount wise, it has an auger in there that screws it out the end and it measures the moisture. And then it comes back out the backside of this clean grain elevator. And then it just comes back around and goes out. That's kind of the idea behind this. So we have to cut holes in here so that the grain will fall out this hole into our moisture tester and then it'll be augered back up and out and go back through the loop. So I've got my places marked and I'm going to cut these holes now and hopefully I'm not doing the wrong thing. I'm gonna grab my Dremel tool now, smooth these edges up a little bit so they're not sharp. Got this little burr bit on a gr die grinder. Where are your eye protection, you guys? Y'all can see that. We've done a pretty good job getting them lined up. I'm gonna bore our holes. I'm gonna 
drill one, put my bolt in, and check for fit. All right, you guys, we got that thing mounted. Uh, a couple of these screws up in here. One of them I had to take a paddle off to get my hand up in there. And then this one here, I took this little easy reach snake thing, like you pick up stuff with, it's got little claws. And I stuck my uh, screw on there and I stuck up from the bottom here, up by the paddles. And then once it kind of got it through, Coleman reached up in there and grabbed it. It was a pain in the butt, so uh, it wasn't easy. But now we're going to start working on trying to figure out all these harnesses and exactly how we're going to route them. Probably going to try to follow some of the factory wiring and harnesses back in here. That way they'll be safe. We don't want them to get tore up. Um, this kit came with a, a thing of zip ties. And so you covered there. Bring y'all back once we get going a little further. We're going to try to figure all these harnesses out. They do have diagrams showing all the harnesses, how they plug in and everything. But it's kind of one of those things we just started fidgeting and plugging stuff together until we figured out what was what. Pretty self-explanatory. Yep. Now we just got to figure out how we're going to route them. Not real crazy about this thing sticking off the side of the machine here, but I don't know any other way you could do it. And it works, so it is what it is, I reckon. We're going to make the best of it. <clears throat> just have to be careful around the woods. Luke is not. I guess you're gonna have to cut opposite way of this on the outside of the woods when you cut. The header Watch the header way. on this side sticks out further. Yeah, anyway, okay. but so, if you get back up. And, yeah. Most time I cut kind of away. I try to stay away from the woods a little bit anyway. How do you think we ought to run this? Go up and bring this one. Is it room to run the cable? Really? Or fit through there? We can run it up if we run it up over like this. Yeah. Alright, so we've got this bracket um, that our header height sensor. So you have a sensor uh, that you want when the header comes up. It just about makes contact with a piece of metal that tells the yield monitor that the header is up. So for us, in order for us to do that, I had to cut a piece of angle iron and I bolted this bracket. They came with it to it. I'm gonna weld it on right here. That should Hopefully keep it out of the way of us tearing it up. And it likes about a half of an inch to an inch from actually touching this plate when the header is in the fully raised position. So I'm gonna weld that on right quick and then we'll run our wires. Don't see there, she's mounted. When the floor of the header comes up, it'll be right underneath that thing and that'll signal that the header is up and that'll be all she wrote. Oh yeah. Like I said, we've got our GPS puck right now. It's just up right up there. I'm not sure if that's gonna be its permanent housing or not, but there's plenty of cable for all this stuff. So it's a mess trying to get it all fit in here, but so as y'all can see here, we are showing everything there now. Um, I'll have to go through here and do some setting up, I know. But for now, I don't think I'm gonna walk y'all through all that. Or I'm gonna at least get everything cleaned up where I can get the combine cranked up and get some air conditioned in here because it's hot in here. Um, now that we've pretty much got this done though, we are all but ready for wheat. When that time comes, um, I got to fill this thing up with fuel. I think we're about out of fuel from what I can remember from last year. Um, I got to all the chains. I'm out of chain lube, so I got to get some of that. Got everything greased. We got the chopper off. I got my chaffer and sieve settings in the back changed. I do have to change my concave settings down here beside me. Um, I have this wheel here that I turn, and you have to get out and look at it to make sure you're in the right place. Um, I'll have to change my cylinder speed settings, which I can do that from the cab. And I've got to bolt my header up, which is some big washers and big bolts that just pull the header up. Instead of it being a flex header, it'll be a rigid header. 
uh, we have to do that for wheat because a lot of times when we're cutting wheat, if the wheat's not down, I'll try to raise it up about six inches to 12 inches because uh, I don't want all that straw. We're going to bale our straw, but I don't want it all. I want some of it stay on the field to help shade a little bit and just to help put a little bit of nutrients back into the soil. So we got those things to do, and I think we'll be ready to try it. It's still pretty loud in here. I might do some tests here in a few minutes to see how well y'all are going to hear me when we're actually up and running. Um, if we keep this combine, we're going to have to pull the motor and put that hub on it, unfortunately. I don't want to, but if we're going to keep it, we're going to have to because it's loud in here. But It's that time. Time to top dress our corn. That is an awesome machine right there. Mint Road Gator 932. Gonna put our in on. Heck yeah. You can see how uh, crooked my roads are. We are in the Fent Road Gator 932. Top dressing. This is some of our earliest planted corn. This is a Pioneer 1464, and it is getting tall. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tassel. Yeah, yeah, there's a tassel coming out. It's a lot earlier than I figured it would be. Yeah. Just one, though. Some of us. A foot high and some of it's ten foot high. This is probably a little tall. Alright man, this is bouncing across the top. So that's good. So we drop off one of these holes, I can't see shit. <laughs> there ain't nothing bad in this field, I mean it's just little dips. No, I'm just trying to see this. Oh, the road's the road. That's yeah, it's a little tall to be. I didn't have auto steer at this point, unfortunately. Corn is looking good. Except for the wet spots. This is a wet area here. It's not three foot high where everything else is six and eight. When are you gonna buy one of these? Maybe not a pen.
Today is Wednesday, it's June 12th. Welcome to Ruth Farms. Um, today, uh, we're gonna try to get everything ready for our wheat harvest that's coming up very rapidly. Um, I'm thinking by the end of the week, probably, we'll get to try if I have everything ready. Um, yesterday, Coleman, my brother, graduated from high school. So everybody wish him a congratulations for that. Um, he's not sure what he's gonna do with his life yet, but who did it that age? Um, I got my fertilizer applied, my nitrogen applied over the top of our corn, really a lot later than I was hoping for. Um, corn is really tall, but he was able to get over it, and hopefully it's gonna help us out and get some high yield in corn. Um, we also got a truckload of soybeans unloaded. Um, it's actually loaded, it's in the truck sitting up there right now. I did get just a little bit of footage of that, but I did not have my GoPro on me, and up there around that equipment is really loud, so. Uh, anyway, got a lot of little footage I'll throw in here of that. Uh, we are loading our 2023 crop gear soybeans, taking them to market. It's about time. Trying to make some room for our 2024 wheat crop here in a couple days. Our beans really looked good last year. Good and clean. About got the front hopper full. Getting ready to pull up and fill the back copper. This truck fully loaded will probably hold 950 bushels. We contract our hauling right now. Eventually, we kind of plan to maybe do our own hauling and buy some semi trucks with a dump trailer. But for now, we just haul, hire it done. Got the old John Deere 830 running auger. I just got our little auger out here. If I get our big one, I can run it a little faster. But it's over there, and this one was in front, so it was easier to get out. And if we don't get the second load, or part of a load hauled uh, before a week, I can always pull that one out and run it into that bin without having to move this auger. So that's the reason we're doing what we're doing. Today, we are going to take the tailgate off. This is our chicken litter tailgate. Um, this is one here, it pivots at the top and we just have pins in the bottom that allows the, you know, the tailgate to swing open. That allows our chicken litter to come out the back. Um, I have to switch between that and the grain tailgate. Um, I haven't exactly figured out how to incorporate both into one yet. Um, eventually we're wanting to get away from the dump truck and get to like a tractor trailer tile um, tractor trailer and a dump trailer as we grow bigger. Um, so I'm not going to put a lot of effort into this at the moment. But anyway, we are going to take this tailgate off this truck and put our grain tailgate on it. There's approximately three to 400 bushels left in our grain bin. Um, last year we only had, um, I think we had like 35 to 40 acres of double crop soybeans and um, some of them just didn't do good. So we ended up with about 1,300 to 1,500 bushels. Um, I don't remember exactly what the number was, but anyway, we got one fully loaded tractor trailer at the, sh at the grain bins now, uh, ready to haul off. And my neighbor um, also has a small quantity, five to 600 bushels of, of soybeans. And um, so we're gonna take mine and his and combine it into one to make a full tractor trailer load um, to haul to market. So I have to take my tailgate off, put my grain tailgate on, load the beans out of my bin into this truck, take it and weigh it, and then go empty it into the neighbor's tractor trailer, and then weigh my truck empty, which will tell me how many bushels I have. Um, so that is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pull off, there's four half inch bolts holding this tailgate on, and then I'll just take this old tailgate up to our barn with the skid steer, and pick up the other tailgate and we'll do a little swap a -rooey. So let's get at it. Just like that. Just like that, that tailgate's off. Now the other tailgate, I will sit it up in here, and then we have some angle iron brackets that go up the sides 
that bolt on and then uh, that tailgate just sits against it and then basically the weight holds it. We have a rod we have to put across here and we have to hook our chain up across there. That prevents the sides from being able to swell out. Uh, grain is heavy and uh, it'll really swell the sides out and could potentially bust the sides out. So let's go get our other tailgate with the John Deere 320. So this is my neighbor's uh, Mack semi-truck. It's a Mack uh, day truck with a, I think it's a Wilson pop bottom. So for anybody who doesn't know what a hopper bottom is, um, this particular one has two separate hoppers. All right, you got the back hopper. It basically comes down just like this from the front to the back. Same thing in the front. We fill, them, fill both hoppers up and then they have a roll tarp that rolls over the top. Uh, you'll see that in that footage from yesterday. I'm gonna try to back this trailer up somewhere up here and get it out of the way. My other tailgate is right there. Got her loaded up. Let's go put it on. I never get this right the first time. Never get this right the first time. Must have the luck on our side today, you go. This is where we're at. This is what we have left of our bin. This is our sweep that mounts to the center of the bin there. We bring it in once the bin is about empty. It has an electric motor on it that runs an auger that pulls all the grain from the outer side and then all the way to the middle. And then we come behind it with a shovel and I've got my leaf blower here to blow all the excess grain out. And we'll have this thing spick and span here within an hour or so. We have an electric auger, electric motor that drives an auger from the center of the bin all the way out here that feeds into this trough. And then we have our big auger powered by the John Deere 830 that will take it into the dump truck. And then we'll take and weigh our dump truck and take it to the, um, uh, get it weighed and take it to the neighbors. And then um, we'll empty it off of that into another semi truck. It's a little, it's a little cluster, clustery, but it's not easy getting a tractor trailer down in here, period. Um, because it's so steep going up between here and my grandpa's. Uh, you can do one empty, but there's no way to get one in here loaded. Uh, so we got to figure that out if we ever decide to get a tractor trailer, which I'm thinking we might, um, especially if I can find a decent deal in one. It would help us out a lot hauling chicken litter. Um, we'd be able to haul potentially our own lime and stuff like that, gravel, rock, whatever. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But let's get this unloaded. Get this been, been clean before it gets any hotter out here because it's hot and humid here in North Carolina. Fire the old 830 up, let it be warming up a little bit. I didn't get you their PTO. Off just a little bit, might better move the truck over a little bit. Bringing the grain from out there to the center, and that's all. Bringing it here, and this 
solve it. It makes it up here. It's a heck of a contraption of augers and motors and tractors and stuff to make an operation work. Good job. It's a very close tie, but cleaning this drain bin out and cleaning the combine are my two least favorite jobs on the farm. They're both hot, sweaty, and nasty jobs. Thankfully, these beans aren't that dusty. They are dusty, but not as bad as, as usual. Just like that, floor's clean. The truck is on butt loaded. They got a good 320 bushels or more on there, probably, and a full tractor trailer. Pretty decent load. That's all our beans for 2023. Now we hope those that's in the field do something. So I apologize here, guys. I had uh, my SD card got corrupted and lost all the file, all the audio files for this uh, bit of clips. But uh, needless to say, what I'm showing here in the next couple clips is the power shaft of the combine. This is the shaft that goes from the flywheel of the engine and comes out and has a great big pulley that you can see there um, sitting, sitting on the shaft. Um, this pulley drives everything from the main uh, hydro system to the unload auger to the main uh, part that drives the threshing system uh, the shaft had the bearing was bad this was what was causing all of our noise uh, excess noise inside the cab uh, the bearing was shot ended up being a $200 bearing um, went on and replaced a couple pulleys excuse me a couple belts while I was in there um, ended up fixing several things that the combine needed fixing uh, and this really really makes a big difference um, in the sound quality inside that cab and the way that you guys are going to be able to hear me in the coming videos as we get into harvest. Uh, but that's what this was about. This turned into a heck of a job. Had to remove one of the hydraulic pumps. That big pulley that weighs probably 100 pounds. Had to remove the clean grain elevator. A uh, bunch of stuff had to come out. And it ended up just being a pain in the butt. But uh, once I got it done, everything back together, and as quiet as it is now, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, probably took me... I would say a good six to eight hours to do this job. Maybe not quite that long, but I'm telling you guys, it was a job. You know, that's a catastrophic loss if you want to lose it. So, you gotta make sure you have that insurance. Right, luckily, I have insurance and it's paid up, so if this old girl goes up in flames, it's okay. I don't want to lose her because she's a good combine, but I have the stuff to cover it if I need to. Alright y'all, I've got my microphone off noise cancellation so that y'all can hear what it actually sounds like. <laughs> Is that not quiet or what? It blows my mind how much quieter it is in here.
need the noise cancellation anymore. I might once we rev it up, I don't know. Thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. If y'all would, leave us a like, comment, and subscribe for more. Uh, next video we will be harvesting, just as you see it right here. Turned out to be a pretty daggum good wheat harvest, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Thank y'all, have a good one, God bless.